When building a decision tree, the way it will decide what feature to split on at a node will be based on what choice of feature reduces entropy the most, reduces entropy or reduces impurity or maximizes purity. In decision tree learning, the reduction of entropy is called information gain. Let's take a look in this video at how to compute information gain and therefore choose what feature to use to split on at each node in your decision tree. Let's use the example of deciding what feature to use at the root node of the decision tree we're building just now for recognizing cats versus not cats. If we had split using the ear shape feature at the root node, this is what we would have gotten. Five examples on the left and five on the right. And on the left, we would have four out of five cats. So P1 would be equal to four fifths or 0 0.8. And on the right, one out of five are cats. So P1 is equal to one fifths or 0 0.2. If you apply the entropy formula from the last video, to this left subset of data and this right subset of data, we find that the degree of impurity on the left is entropy of 0.8, which is about 0.72. And on the right, the entropy of 0.2 is turns out also to be 0.72. So this would be the entropy at the left and right sub-branches if we were to split on the ear shape feature. One other option would be to split on the face shape feature. If we'd done so, then on the left, four out of seven examples would be cats. So P1 is four sevens. And on the right, one third are cats. So P1 on the right is one third. And the entropy of four sevens and the entropy of one third are 0.99 and 0.92. So the degree of impurity in the left and right note seems much higher, 0 0.99 and 0 0.92 compared to 0.72 and 0.72. Finally, the third possible choice of feature to use at the root node would be the whiskers feature, in which case you split based on whether whiskers are present or absent. In this case, P1 on the left is 3 quarters, P1 on the right is 2 six, and the entropy values are as follows. So the key question we need to answer is, given these three options of a feature to use at the root node, which one do we think works best? It turns out that rather than looking at these entropy numbers and comparing them, it would be useful to take a weighted average of them. And here's what I mean. If there's a node with a lot of examples in it with high entropy, that seems worse than if there was a node with just a few examples in it with high entropy. Because entropy as a measure of impurity is worse if you have a very large and impure data set compared to if you just a few examples in a branch of the tree that is very impure. So the key decision is, of these three possible choices of features to use at the root node, which one do we want to use? Associated with each of these splits is two numbers, the entropy on the left subbranch and the entropy on the right subbranch. And in order to pick from these, we like to actually combine these two numbers into a single number. So we can just pick of these three choices, which one looks best. And the way we're going to combine these two numbers is by taking a weight and average. Because how important it is to have low entropy in, say, the left or right subbranch also depends on how many examples went into the left or right subbranch. Because if there are a lot of examples in, say, the left subbranch, then it seems more important to make sure that that left subbranch's entropy value is low. So in this example, we have five of the 10 examples went to the left subbranch. So we can compute the weighted average is 5 out of 10 times the entropy of 0.8. And then add to that, 5 out of 10 examples also went to the right subbranch, plus 5 tenths times the entropy of 0 0.2. Now, for this example in the middle, the left subbranch had received 7 out of 10 examples. And so we're going to compute 7 tenths times the entropy of 
0.57 plus the right subbranch had 3 out of 10 examples, so plus 3 tens times entropy of 0.33 of one third. And finally, on the right, we'll compute 4 tens times entropy of 0.75 plus 6 tens times entropy of 0.33. And so the way we will choose a split is by computing these three numbers and picking whichever one is lowest because that gives us the left and right subbranches with the lowest average weighted entropy. In the way that decision trees are built, we're actually going to make one more change to these formulas to stick to the convention in decision tree building, but it won't actually change the outcome, which is rather than computing this weighted average entropy, we're going to compute the reduction in entropy compared to if we hadn't split at all. So if we go to the root node, remember that at the root node, we had started off with all 10 examples of the root node with five cats and five dogs. And so at the root node, we had P1 equals five tens or 0.5. And so the entropy of the root node, entropy of 0.5 was actually equal to one. This was maximum impurity because it was five cats and five dogs. So the formula that we're actually going to use for choosing a split is not this weighted entropy at the left and right subbranches. Instead, it's going to be the entropy at the root node, which is entropy of 0.5, then minus this formula. And in this example, if you work out the math, it turns out to be 0.28. For the face shape example, we can compute entropy at the root node, entropy of 0.5 minus this, which turns out to be 0.03, and for whiskers, compute that, which turns out to be 0.12. These numbers that we just calculated, 0.28, 0.03, and 0.12, these are called the information gain. And what it measures is the reduction in entropy that you get in your tree, resulting from making a split. Because the entropy was originally 1, at the root node, and by making the split, you end up with a lower value of entropy. And the difference between those two values is the reduction in entropy, and that's 0.28 in the case of splitting on the ear shape. So why do we bother to compute reduction in entropy rather than just entropy at the left and right subbranches? It turns out that one of the stopping criteria for deciding when to not bother to split any further is if the reduction in entropy is too small, in which case you could decide you're just increasing the size of the tree unnecessarily and risking overfitting by splitting and just decide to not bother if the reduction in entropy is too small below a threshold. In this particular example, splitting on ear shape results in the biggest reduction in entropy, 0.28 is bigger than 0.03 or 0.12, and so we would choose to split on the ear shape feature at the root node. On the next slide, let's give a more formal definition of information gain. And by the way, one additional piece of notation that we'll introduce also on the next slide is these numbers, 5 tens and 5 tens. I'm going to call this W left because that's the fraction of examples that went to the left branch. And I'm going to call this W right because that's the fraction of examples that went to the right branch. Whereas for this middle example, W left would be 7 tenths and W right will be 3 tenths. So let's now write down the general formula for how to compute information gain. Using the example of splitting on the ear shape feature, let me define P1 left to be equal to the fraction of examples in the left subtree that have a positive label that are cats. And so in this example, P1 left would be equal to 4 fifths. And also, let me define W left to be the fraction of examples out of all the examples of the root node that went to the left subbranch. And so in this example, W left would be 5 tenths. Similarly, let's define P1 right to be, of all the examples in the right branch, the fraction that are positive examples. And so with one out of five of these examples being cats, that would be one fifth. And similarly, W right is 
five tenths, the fraction of examples that went to the right subbranch. And let's also define P1 root to be the fraction of examples that are positive in the root node. So in this case, this would be 5 tenths or 0 0.5. Information gain is then defined as the entropy of P1 root. So what's the entropy at the root node? Minus that weighted entropy calculation that we had on the previous slide. Minus W left, this would be 5 tenths in the example, times the entropy applied to P1 left, that's entropy on the left subbranch, plus W right, the fraction of examples that went to the right branch, times entropy of P1 right. And so with this definition of entropy, you can calculate the information gain associated with choosing any particular feature to split on in the node. And then out of all the possible features you could choose to split on, you can then pick the one that gives you the highest information gain. And that will result in hopefully increasing the purity of your subsets of data that you get on the left and right subbranches of your decision tree. And that will result in choosing a feature to split on that increases the purity of your subsets of data in both the left and right subbranches of your decision tree. Now that you know how to calculate information gain or reduction in entropy, you know how to pick a feature to split on at a node. Let's put all the things we've talked about together into the overall algorithm for building a decision tree given a training set. Let's go see that in the next video.